Thanks, Ash. Eric, good on you, mate. Thanks. Uh, good morning, Brem. Good to see you all. Uh, I appreciate um, Sam doing that uh, long term, um, long scripture reading this morning because um, I didn't want to do it to start, you know, or go through it. It's a bit of a long, a few, few scriptures in the message this morning. I thought, well, I've worked just a bit too much scripture. So thank you, Sam. But it's good to read it because it's an interesting chapter in uh in um let's get short here in uh Romans 14, Romans 14, verses 1 through 23. It's an interesting chapter. And we're gonna kind of uh no, I'm not gonna do it. Not move it. Can't move this right. Okay, sorry, Brian. So uh, uh, we're going to be looking at a few things through today about uh, a weak brother, a weak brother, and say a weak sister, weak brother, and strong brothers, strong strong sisters, and strong brethren. Okay, we're going to touch on things, and uh, it's interesting with this one as we go through it how. Uh, Paul talks about, uh, we're talking about um, uh, meat to idols as such. And he does it in Corinthians. And he also talks about a weak brethren or a brethren in Galatians, where he's very firm telling the, the Jewish Christians, you know, you take all these uh, ceremonies and all, they kind of wanted to keep them within the church. And, 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 and it was, uh, Paul was telling them that they shouldn't be doing that, you know, we're now in Christ, you know. But anyway, let me follow. Let's follow through the lesson with me, and uh, and uh, hopefully it comes over clear to you. In Romans 14, Paul deals with the obligations of church members to each other regarding differences of opinions. You know, when I'm talking about opinions, we're not just talking. We've all got our general opinions in life and and things like that. But we're talking specifically about uh, our Christian faith and in the faith. A Christian fellowship in situations where a strong difference of uh, opinions thrive, there tends to be to, to disrupt and cause uh, disrupt unity. Paul gives specific instructions to the problem of contradictory views in relation to, of course, walking with God. Not on the matters essential. I mean, our things are essential. We should keep, you know, assembling together, take the Lord's Supper. To worship on the Lord's Day of Sunday. I mean, and many other things are essential, but but on matters which are indifferent, opinions, you know, secondary things, and even trivial things sometimes. I think sometimes the church can become divided over things such things. So uh, just to summarize quickly on Romans 14, what we've Sam read, 1 to 12 gives instructions for Christians to who made different things. A matter of conscience. And Romans 14, 13 to 23, outline instructions for a proper employment of Christian liberty. And that's what we are. We have liberty in cross. We have this liberty in cross. The weak brother. All in the church are not the same in mind and comprehension. The development of our mind and understanding are governed by our situation, our influence our experiences in life, our culture and education and background. So we're very different. This is a congregation that is very different. We all have our different backgrounds, culture. Some of you are far more well-educated than what I ever was. I finished uh, my education as soon as I could to get out and go to work. Whereas you, a lot of you guys have gone and got an education. So you've had the you have the ability to uh, grasp things better as such. Although I still believe in within the Christian faith, it's all about what's in here. It's all about your understanding, what's in here in your heart, in your heart. <laughs> you know, we often banter about things, our opinions, you know, the food we like. We're doing it on WhatsApp in a week. Rather <laughs> bad about oh, you know, we should eat this, we eat that, your favorites. 
Do we have any different things like that? But when it comes to the church, you're going to get a message here of what Paul and Paul's trying to tell us is we've got to be uh, responsible to each other, to the weak, and the same with the strong. So the weak and strong. Weak, one, eats vegetables. We'll go back. Okay, I just want to read out and jump back. I kind of jumped a bit. As for the one who was weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he must eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. God has welcomed us all as a church or his body. We just jump back. I cut out the slide in the wrong place. So get him on weak and strong again. So the weak one eats the vegetables. So in verse two, is, is a vegetarian Christian a weak one? But of course not. Because once again, like anything, we look at context. It's talking about meat offered to idols. That's what was generating here. So, so it's not as if someone who was eating vegetables is fine with God. That's what he's saying. But this wasn't the problem. The man's so point two there. The man, so this is an example we can look at. Just an example we can look at. Two men, both were idol worshippers. Both became Christians. One would not eat any meat that had been offered to idols. Because of his, his, his faith, oh, I'm not going to eat meat to idols. The other would eat meat offered to idols. The man who would eat did so with his relatives who were not Christians, yet he did not worship the idols. But he had the food. But he wasn't worshiping the idols. He was accepted by God as long as he did not eat to the idol. And then you got the other example, the other one who would not eat, kept it, kept away from his relatives who were idol worshippers. It was very strict that he should not eat the food. He was accepted by God also. And this is poor by our God that accepts us all in such matters. Right. So I want to look here about our application of, of how we vary, how we should treat each other. Look at a few scriptures, how we treat each other. And I've kind of jumped here to Romans 14, 17, because that's what I'll be doing. Just, just, if you've got your scriptures, try and, we're going to be looking at the scriptures, but if you want to keep it open for uh, reference to Romans 14. For the kingdom of God is not a matter, and this is Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Paul makes that contrast here to what was going on in church. He says, this is what we're about in verse 17. The kingdom of God is not about outward things like food and drink but about living a righteous life and finding peace and joy through the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at them three things, and righteousness is peace and, and the joy is in a Christian faith. In other words, it's not about physical or material things, but it's about spiritual matters. It emphasizes that our relationship with God and with others is more important than external matters. We do all have, have them problems. Find and balance with our physical, uh, material life and our spiritual life. The church brings us together as one. So the righteous is a character or quality of being right or just. The one who trusts in Christ. And it becomes what Second Corinthians 5, 21 tells us. For our sake, he made him be sin, our Lord Jesus, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus <laughs> makes us righteous. None of us are righteous. In fact, the next scripture shows us his righteousness is what God has given us, and we have the righteousness of our own. In verse 22, the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus, for all who believe, for well, there is no distinction. All are sinned and fall short of the glory of God and justified by his grace as a gift. 
through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, who God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. Notice that to receive by faith. It's our faith in God that makes us righteous, our belief and trust in it. Remember Abraham and all that, it, it, it was through faith. Because uh, it's just going back into verse, pick up 25, whom God put forward as a propitiation for by his son uh, to receive by faith. This is to show God's righteousness because in divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that we might be just and justify the one who has faith in Jesus. See, our faith in Jesus, we must have faith, we must trust our Lord. You know what a Hebrews 11, 6 says, it's impossible to please God without faith. And God rewards those who seek him. So this is not one uh, faith we have here, it's a strong committed faith. Peace is rest and contentment in God. The more we rest in God, the greater is our peace. The only this only comes from growth. How do we get peace? It's through growth. It's spending time with God in prayer, study, and learning to walk with God, be committed to Him. That's how we get peace. If we don't seek God, we don't get that peace. And not only that, that, that peace is what we get between ourselves. That's the harmony we have because we're committed that way. Philippians 4, 6, 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and application with thanks, and let your request be named to God. Seek God. Prayer is so essential for us all. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding is beyond our understanding. We guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. And again, joy is a delight and gladness, a source of joy. Again, it's faith. We don't have that faith, we won't have that joy, we won't have that peace, that joy. In Romans 15, 13, it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. The hope of eternity with our Lord Jesus. We believe it, we trust it, we know it, that I am saved today. My faith tells me that in Jesus. And so that's the point trying to draw on the balance. If we don't grow in our faith, we don't have a good balance in our Christian lives. And that peace and harmony with forever. So now get more to the point here about spiritual growth. And how we need to encourage each other. Righteous peace and joy only comes as we grow. Spiritual growth. Some grow normally. Others grow fast. And yet others grow slowly. We can plant. We can water. But growth is caused by God. We never need to forget that. Brother. We never need to forget that. Our trust, in, our trust and faith in God. The close relationship with him is what develops our spiritual growth. In 1 Corinthians 3, 6, 7, it says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters anything, but only God who calls gives the growth. Do we want our church to grow? And we pray to God and ask him to guide us in it. Ask him to give us growth. We do not try to force it. Take care in your zeal to do not try to force growth. Only God knows when and how much growth will take place. Mark 4, 26 through 29 says, the parable of the seed growing. This is the, and this parable, yeah. verse 26. And he said, the kingdom of God is as a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knew not how. We don't know how. That's what it's saying here. It's what really the, the power of that. We don't know how happens. God's causing it. 
The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle and becomes the harvest has come, because harvest has come. So spiritual growth is caused by God. We plan the water, but God makes things happen, causes it. Walking, not running. Nowhere near in the Bible does it say run with God. Nowhere in the Bible do I read run. You know what did God say? He walked with Adam and Eve, he walked with Enoch, he walked with Noah. You know, I was reading an article, it's a new book I'm going to get actually, I was reading an article and it is about, and he was talking about how he was struggling with prayer and, and with um, and with his faith in general. And he was, and he got to about how God, God, or how we as humans, if we walk normally, we walk maybe three kilometers an hour, maybe maybe four, depends what kind of walker you are. And three or five kilometers an hour anyway. Okay. And that's and what he's saying is what he's learned is how God walks. He walks with us and wants to lead us. He doesn't want us to run. He doesn't want us to push things. He wants us to walk with him. It's like prayer, you know. I, uh, I find with prayer and situations, me personally. You know, sometimes I've had a, uh, I've been doing, I've been doing a kitchen at home and it's been hard. And I go and sit down, I can have a prayer. And I go and pray and I fall, start going to fall on my sleep. But I've learned with me, I like to do a walk, go and have a regular walk a day. And that's my prayer time. My mind is acting to love and I talk the prayer. See, so in anything, you know, what, and it's hard for you guys who, and, and, and people of Reverend who are working, it's find your time for prayer. Find your Bible time and say. So we're going to look at some, some things here, what scripture says about we are to each other and how we should treat each other. First Thessalonians 5, 14 and 15. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint heart, help the weak, be patient with them all, see that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good. To one another and to everyone. Do not cause be the cause of stumbling. So then let us not pursue what makes for peace and for, for mutual upbuilding. Do not, for the sake of, of food, destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to make another stumble for what he eats. It is Good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. No, is that? Well, that's a strong scripture. Rather than have your brother stumble, you're doing something in your liberty. You know God, don't, and you may be strong in your growth, but if it causes your brother to stumble, then avoid it. Verse 20, and it's good not to eat meat, to drink wine, to do anything. In verse 22, the faith that you have, notice that the faith you have to keep between yourself and God, blesses the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself with what he approves. But whoever doubts is condemned if he eats, because he is eating not from faith, or whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. So if you know there's something you should do, you don't, it's sin. And if you do something in faith, you do it in faith. Because you trust God and you believe that's what it is. So we build up, we don't tear down, due 25. But you beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy, holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Have mercy on those who doubt, and this is the thing, we pray in some of doubt. We save others by snatching them out of fire, and to others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. In that part there, he's talking about don't get caught up in a sin. If someone who sinned, don't get caught up in a sin you're trying to help. Now to him who's able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before time we know forever. 
Brethren, uh, doubt and hesitation makes us weak. We feel weak. And we get that. We all get that. And there's are times that you doubt. There are times you hesitate and you're not sure. Even a strong fear like that. We get them periods where we doubt. That's why we need prayer. That's why we need to, to, faith needs to grow. Faith and growth makes us strong. And I'll lift prayer time. Prayer time. Uh, Bible time. Spend time with God. Learning what his will is for you and for me, for the church. Prayer time. Fellowship time. Encouragement time. We're not here. How can we encourage each other? Face to face is far better than Zoom. Because there we can encourage each other. Attendance. Attendance time. The apostles doubted in Matthew 28 when Jesus came to him and he raised and he went to her, they were praising him. And yet it said some of the apostles doubted. Their faith went even right there. And the Lord had been raised. In Jude 24, we just read it, it says, only God can keep us from stumbling. Only God can keep us from stumbling. Balance your time with the Lord. Don't miss out on this precious time. As I said, let's walk with God. Let's not run and let's not lag behind. We need to sometimes need to just stop and miss. We're in such a hurry in our lives. We're so busy. And God wants us to stop. Spend time with him and listen. I'm not going to go, but some key verse, the key verses of this, I'm not going to do it because I want us to, uh, I want to close, do the conclusion. Key verses here, if you want to look over the leg and look over the lesson again, but a key verse is about four, six, and 13. And I was only going to do this if I had the time. But once again, it's related to what you're talking about. I'm going to go in the conclusion so we can finish and now uh, oh, we can carry on leading the, ver the verses tomorrow. In conclusion, brethren, the weak brother who has a weak conscience or a weak faith, a weak conscience is the one that easily influenced by the opinions and practices of others. If you're weak in the faith, you fuck copy and you're strong. You say, ah, oh, that's okay, that's wrong. That's wrong. That are easily influenced. And that does not have a clear understanding of what is right and wrong in matters of Christian liberty. I'm talking about the weak here. Weak faith is one that is not fully convinced of the truth and the power of the gospel that is prone to doubt and fear. But Paul instructs here, he instructs the stronger brothers and sisters who have a mature understanding of freedom in Christ to receive the weaker ones with love and patience. That's what it's all about, brethren. And not to judge them or cause them to stumble by their actions. Also warns the weaker ones not to condemn the stronger ones who are exercising their liberty. In other words, we're bickering in argument, oh, you know, read over opinions and indifferences. But to respect their conscience and follow their own convictions. Paul's main concern is that both groups honor Christ and seek to edify one another in love, particularly the strong, they edify and encourage. That's what edifying is to instruct and give more understanding to the faith. And that's what we need to grow in our faith, all of the church needs to grow. And in Christ, the weak and strong belong to him. That's the point Paul's making. The weak and the strong belong to him. Even in our indifferences, and we got them. We've got them, brother. Thank you.